We started from scratch. We uh, scrapped all the old systems and, and really uh, wanted to have everything fresh and new and convenient to our people. And by 2025, we can honestly say our public services are 100% online. So 24 seven, you can access them from the comfort of your home or from abroad or on the move, wherever you are. And you never have to fill in a paper or sign something uh, physically or go anywhere. Well, I, I cannot say that the government can um, take all the glory and say that we helped our companies achieve everything. Obviously, uh, this has also got to do with Estonia having very smart, very talented and very, very creative people. And this is the basis of uh, why we've achieved what we have. Yes, absolutely. It's important that the government is supportive and the government is ready to take risks and, and also support different kind of innovation. Uh, but also it, it does boil down to having the people that are entrepreneurial, uh, that want to uh, create and, and also uh, want to show that uh, innovative mindset uh, abroad. Um, what makes it, I think, special for Estonia is being such a small country, we have created a very good ecosystem for our startups. So they have a very good ground to uh, be creative, but also grow to a certain extent. Uh, we are then very internationally minded. We are good in uh, communicating or at least trying to promote our strengths abroad so uh, that we get the startups to the next level when they need to grow um, outside of Estonia. And uh, we are known to have uh, the most unicorns per capita and uh, the most startups per capita. And we're very proud of that. So at least something we're doing right together, with the government and the private sector and the, and the society as a whole. So actually, uh, this is our bread and butter. We're very proud of our digital journey and we're happy to share this with all countries, all governments and entities around the world. Um, this has been a public-private partnership for us. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of companies in Estonia who have uh, basically uh, stepped this journey with us for uh, decades already. And they have expertise uh, to tailor make it to suit everyone's needs. And we as a government are there to give the stamp of trust, really. Just saying that these are the companies that work with us. These are the companies that helped us achieve our goals. And uh, now you can uh, use their experience and expertise as well. And we have even organizations in Estonia whose main responsibility and main job is to uh, promote this experience so that other governments can learn from our uh, achievements and our successes, but also learn from our mistakes and not to uh, make them twice. I believe that we are actually the number one country in the world uh, for a digital government or e-government. And how we achieved this, uh, it wasn't an easy journey, uh, but it was an important part of our history, really. We started already in the 90s with digitalizing everything. We started from scratch. We uh, scrapped all the old systems and, and really uh, wanted to have everything fresh and new and convenient to our people. And by 2025, we can honestly say our public services are 100% online. So 24 seven, you can access them from the comfort of your home or from abroad or on the move, wherever you are. And, and you never have to fill in a paper or sign something uh, physically or go anywhere. And this is something they're very proud of. Uh, it has made our life uh, more convenient. Uh, it gives you more time to deal with things that you actually want to deal with, which is not necessarily talking to the, your government. And it also saves us about 2% of GDP every year. So obviously health is very important to every one of us and your health data is something that people want to keep private. They want to make sure that it's safe and um, something that in Estonia we managed to do for decades now. Uh, our health data is 100% online. So whenever you go to a dentist, to a hospital, uh, to a pharmacy, all of this is online, but it's your data and it's for you to decide who to share this with and, and how. Um, but, but then again, it's, it's there and easily accessible. 
if you allow it to be. And people trust the government to take care of this system of uh, maintaining and keeping this data because we are also top of the world in cybersecurity. We've had a lot of experience of different entities trying to attack us, trying to take our data, but they've never managed to do that because we've built uh, our defenses. Uh, we've done this through international cooperation. We're making sure that they're always up to date and the data is always secure. And it's not kept in one major huge database where, you know, if somebody hacks it, then it's all gone. But we made sure to encrypt it and hide it in, in a way that it's, uh, that it's always accessible if authorized, but you cannot steal it, you cannot change it and you cannot tamper with it. Uh, sure, I mean, uh, obviously as a small country, we always look for partnerships elsewhere and we also look for uh, customers elsewhere. And, uh, and as said before, we can uh, operate as a testbed for other larger governments and larger uh, audiences and customer bases. So some things that we have done very well, we can uh, share with other countries. For instance, we have a good uh, biobank of uh, Estonian genomes. About a fifth of our um, DNA is banked and it's uh, ready to use for medical research. And this is something that other governments and other countries can learn from, on how to take this data and learn from it to make the, the um, medical procedures and uh, medical decisions more precise. So that is just one example. Um, but also with uh, medical equipment that is uh, technologically new and creative, we as a small country, we can uh, more easily test it and make sure that it works, that it's safe, uh, and uh, that it's adjusted in the best possible way to uh, every customer who needs it and then we can share it with the rest of the world. Uh, the same with medicine, the same with uh, different technological solutions. We can show you how we already did it so you can see if this works for you or if you need something to be adjusted or changed. Uh, we're, a, we're a good uh, test pet and that is uh, something that we think we really bring to the world. So I think Estonia and UAE have um, very much in common. We have the same creative mindset. We both strive for uh, digital transformation and uh, we don't uh, necessarily share the same path all the time, but I think our end goals are the same. That uh, the more digital you are, the more online you are and uh, making sure that everything is also safely and securely stored. Um, it's, it's just for the betterment of your society and for the people. And I think both of our governments are, uh, the leadership has shown this creativity and this readiness for innovation. Um, and uh, and this, is, uh, this has made our relationship uh, deeper and uh, stronger. Hello, my name is Maidis and I'm CEO of uh, Seven Sense. And we have created the first telehaptic device for the blind. So what it does, it's Essentially, it allows blind person to feel the surrounding objects, motion, speed and distance through the sense of touch on your forehead. We are using different types of 3D cameras, uh, thermal cameras, infrared lights and time of flight sensors. Then we capture the surrounding environment and then we translate it into the haptic material, which is our this kind of unique selling point. And you can think of it, it's, it's like a display for the skin. So it has a physical pixels and it creates the image through the sense of touch. Digital transformation is being taken on as a technology assignment, but uh, you know, technology usually is the most easiest part of the transformation. So uh, it is part of digital, but technology is the means of achieving the transformation, but never the, kind of the objective on its own. Uh, and quite often what we see with the, such approach to digital transformation is that uh, paper bureaucracy just being translated to the digital bureaucracy without actually bringing any value or any benefits or any gains to the, you know, the, the end users and customers of, uh, of uh, digital services. So, so that's, that's another major issue that we see where kind of we advise and we advocate and we recommend to, to basically uh, not just digital processes, but to conduct, you know, the whole uh, redesign exercise for the for the processes and for the services. So basically, make the full use of technology and then redesign the you know the the, the services, the processes with the full use of existing technologies. So we are very much a data driven platform, uh, meaning that we collect data from patients uh, and then help 
the care team or the clinicians make better decisions uh, based on that data. So that basically means that we are a clinical decision support system for cardiologists and cardiology nurses uh, using uh, different risk modeling and artificial intelligence to, to uh, help them make better decisions.